Hi, I'm Jimmy Burson, and you're watching uh, Robert Houston's Western Swing Rules. Hi, I'm Jimmy Burson, and you're watching uh, Western Swing Rules. I'm a uh, Western Swing Band leader. First of all, I want to say if you've been studying jazz guitar, Western Swing guitar, I may not help you very much today, but I want to share some things with you that helped me become a Western Swing musician and maybe that will help you avoid having to do a lot of things on your own. And I want to thank Robert for uh, having me and uh, maybe showing some elements uh, that will help you in your musical endeavors. Uh, one of the things that when I started out to play Western Swing, I was playing fiddle, playing with a group, and we played Western Swing songs, and I went to see the Bob Wills Texas Playboys and something about that was very different than what we played. And I finally figured out it was the chords, chord changes. So I started doing some studies on, ch on chords. And I, that's what I want to talk to you about today. One of the essential things uh, that I think you need to learn if you want to be a Western swing musician is diminished chords. It's, uh, it's vital in Western swing music. And it's not the only thing, but it's uh, a good starting place for those of you that are making the transition from maybe traditional country or bluegrass and want to play swing. So uh, in the old cowboy movies in the silent days, just for information, if the bad guy was sneaking up on the good guy, one of the things, if you'll notice more often than not, the chords that they played while this was happening we're diminished chords, and I'm going to show you what this does. You got to imagine a guy in a black hat sneaking up with a guy on the up on the guy with the white hat. Now, why did they do that? Why did they use a diminished chord instead of something else? I'll tell you. My theory is it because it added excitement and intensity. And it does the same thing for music. It adds something. It gives it a little excitement, a little life, and makes you pay attention to it. That's what they did in the movies. That's why we put it in music. Uh, I listened to a song like uh, Faded Love, and we played it in my band before I really got interested. It was, well, let's play it in A chord where you sing it. As I look at the letters that you wrote to me it's you that I am thinking of and when I went to see the Texas Playboys they played the same song but it was entirely a different kind of music and their intro in the key of D was something like this So I'll go home, start studying chord progression, got me some books and uh, finally figured out if I wanted to be a Western swing musician, like I said, I was playing a fiddle in a band. So I really wasn't paying a, as much attention to the chords as when I started playing the guitar. And I, I don't claim to be a great guitarist, but I want to help you cut some corners that I, that I didn't, uh, I was not able to cut. I had to hammer this out all on my own. So. If you're a musician, you need to learn the, uh, the diminished chords. The good thing about it, there is only three diminished chords, and the only difference in them is uh, the chords are inverted. In other words, they put the high one on the bottom every time you change it. These are all the, these are all the same chords, just a different place in the, in the chord. They're inverted. So there's... And on this whole guitar here, there's only three diminished chords. So that's one good thing that you can uh, take to the bank when you start to learn in uh, your Western swing song. So we're gonna do a song like uh, Deep Water. Uh, and if I'm winding up in deep 
diminish chords, get you back to the one. Water, I'm starting to care for. There's your diminished for you, two minus seven. I'm drifting into deep water. B. That's a diminished careful what you do. You one sharp diminished wanna romance and I'm sick in love and I know I'll regret it when it ends cause I'm winding up in deep water why can't we still be friends? Now, that was not all diminished chords, but they had a vital part in making that, uh, spicing it up a little bit, as my daddy used to say. If you played it the other way, I'm drifting into deep water. I'm starting to care for you. You see, it's not the same song without the diminished chords. So if you want to be a Western swing musician, you need to study diminished chords. What it is, it's a, if you want to get on the piano, it's a, it's a four half steps. Then you go up four more half steps and you go up four more half steps and that's going to give you a diminished chord and you've got a like I say there's only three if you're in the key of C there's a one diminished which is right there and there's lots of different positions that you can make them I use, I use this one a lot or if you want a, the one sharp diminished right there are the two diminished so the one and the three diminished or the one sharp diminished is the same thing as a three flat diminished. So you've only got three of them to learn. And that's a good thing. I think I just keep repeating myself. But uh, if you want to be a Western swing musician, you need to know what diminished chords are and how to use them. Thanks, Jimmy. To find out more about Jimmy or to order his music, follow the information on your screen. Thanks again for watching Western Swing Rules. There is one. I can't forget boys Somewhere in San Antonio I remember how we used to be